Hello everyone, welcome back to my weekend updates. I've continued development on Tree Month, and this last week what I added was a structure generation system that allows me to place any predefined structures in the world during the generation stage. This provides the ability to add anything I want, including but not limited to a wide variety of trees. I've only implemented these two tree types at the moment, but more variations and species will be coming. This system I've implemented gives me complete artistic control over what I want to generate. It's not just predefined structures. I can incorporate as much variation through randomness as I please down to the individual block level. As you can see here, I added a custom tree to demonstrate that. When I place it down, I take that position as the random seed and use it to branch off in a random direction with a constant upwards offset so it goes up on average and not just anywhere. This results in a random tree every time I place it down. However, this randomness is deterministic. So, as you can see, placing a tree in the exact same place multiple times results in the exact same tree every time. This way everything's consistent. Using this system, I can and will be adding many different types of structures. This can range from castles to dungeons to other tree types and much more. You can check out the code for this at this GitHub page, which is linked below. On top of adding this in, I've began rewriting everything from scratch, which I like to do whenever I'm this early in a project because the early development tends to add a lot of bloat as I am experimenting with new things, and as well as I tend to learn a lot from my initial attempts at writing things. <clears throat> so the rewritten code can be a lot more efficient and will almost always be more neat. I want to do this in order to clean up the code before implementing the octree data structure because I can see more and more every day how much work it's going to take to restructure the current data structure. So I might as well start from scratch with the new data structure in mind. What I would like to do is, along the way, make the rest of my code much more generalized so that switching to a new data structure in the future won't require so much work. Because many things like the terrain gen and rendering heavily depend on the memory layout of the data. In doing so, I've run into a bunch of bugs trying to mess around with new rendering concepts. I eventually want to completely path trace the world, so I went ahead and wrote a super simple path tracer. And of course, in order to render this in real time, I need to do a very small number of samples per pixel. This results in a noisy image, as you can see. However, there are many ways to combat this. The simplest way is just to average the current frame with the previous frame, which eventually results in a nice, smooth image. The problem with this approach is that it results in motion blur because it has no consideration for what it blurs together. To compensate for this, we should consider the position of the surface that we're looking at, and see if we can get the same position from the perspective of the camera within the previous frame. This process is known as temporal reprojection. I tried to implement it here, and despite me believing that the math I do to reproject is devoid of any bugs, we get some terrible results. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next week. To end this video off, I'll show you all a compilation of a few clips I recorded while trying to fix the reprojection.